Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the object relationship association and other cardinality properties of object oriented programming principles. First of all, we are considering the term association. Association represents the relationship between the objects and classes. Associations are bidirectional. The directions implied by the name are the forward direction and the opposite is the reverse direction. Let us consider this example. Here we can see a pilot can fly planes. The inverse of this relation is the plane is flown by the pilot. So these are relationships. So for every object we can see some relationships do exist. Let us consider some more examples. For example, a teacher teaches a student. That is a one side relationship. If you are considering in the opposite direction, it can be read as a student is teached by a teacher. Another example we can say a car is driven by a driver. In the reverse order, we can tell that a driver drives a car. So these are known as relationships or associations. While considering an association, another term that in another term that should be considered is cardinality. A cardinality specifies how many instances of one class may relate to a single instance of an associated class. Cardinality constrains the number of related objects and often is described as being one or many. For this, let us consider the producer consumer association. A special form or association is a consumer producer or a producer consumer relationship, also known as a client server association or a use relationship. It can be viewed as a one way interaction. One object requests the service of another object. The object that makes the request is the consumer or client and the object that receives the request and provides the service is producer or server. For example, let us consider an item to be printed by using a printer. The consumer producer association, we have a print object that prints the consumer object. The print producer provides the ability to print other objects. Here while we are sending a file to a printer from a computer, the computer is asking a service from the printer. So we can consider a computer as a consumer and the printer as a producer, where the producer gives some service to the consumer. Another term to be discussed is the aggregation. All objects except the most basis one are composed of and many contained other objects. Breaking down object into the object from which they are composed is decomposition. This is possible because an object's attribute need not be simple data fields. Attributes can reference each other objects. Since each object has an identity, one object can refer to other object. This is known as aggregation. For example, consider an object known as car. A car object is an aggregation of other objects like engine, seat, wheel, other technical factors, electrical sections, electronic sections, etc. So every object may composed of aggregate of other object. Let us consider one more example. For example, we are considering an object known as college. We can see other classes or objects like student object, teacher object, faculty object, office object, administrative objects, and many other objects. All these objects are aggregated to form a common object or a large object or a large class known as college. So this aggregation principle is one of the important points to be noted in object oriented principle. Next of all, we are discussing the static and dynamic binding. Determining which function has to be involved at a compile time is known as static binding. 
static binding optimized the calls for example a function call the process of determining at a run time which function to involve is termed as dynamic binding dynamic binding occurs when polymorphic call is issued it allows some method invocation decision to be deferred until the information is known for example cut operation in an edit sub menu it passes the cut operation to any object on the desktop each of which handles the message in its own way while considering the static and dynamic binding next term is object persistence as we discuss objects are runtime entities of a class or simply object are instance of a class so an object have a lifetime they are explicitly created and can exist for a part of a time that has been the duration of the process in which they were created a file or database can provide support for object having a longer lifetime longer than the duration of the process for which they are created this characteristic is called object persistence so simply we can tell object persistence means the lifespan of a object that is created and finally we are discussing meta class in an object oriented system everything is an object then what about the class is class an object yes we can tell that class is an object so if it is an object it must belong to a class such a class belong to a class is referred to as a meta class or a class of classes or simply the super class of all classes so my dear students in this lecture we had discussed some terms or a relation between object and association firstly we had discussed object relationship and association cardinality producer consumer association aggregation binding object persistence and meta classes so my dear student kindly go through this assignment question the assignment question is write in detail about object relationship and object association second one is cardinality thirdly consumer producer association fourth one is aggregation fifth one is static binding and dynamic binding sixth one is object persistence and finally meta classes so my dear students in the upcoming lecture we will discuss object oriented system development life cycle or o o s d l c so see you soon until then goodbye thank you and all the best